today we're going to be looking at marriage and what is marriage. Um, I know that you could probably look and have a definition of marriage, but we're going to look at what the Bible says that marriage is. Who is involved in marriage? We are first going to look at Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 24. It says, The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib. He had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She, will be, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. This is why a man leaves his mother and father and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. So we see in Genesis with Adam and Eve that that was the institution or the start of marriage. Um, that is when God said that the two people, the man and the woman, would come together and become one flesh. We then look at Mark chapter 10, verses 6 to 8. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and become united to his flesh, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. And that doesn't mean, obviously, that you're like connected at the flesh, um, but it means that you're one as in you support one another um, in life and in all you do. So it's a togetherness. So marriage is a union of one man and one woman. God made it really clear that he wanted it to be man and woman in marriage, um, and just one of each in the marriage. How long does marriage last? We look at Matthew 19, verse 6. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together let no one separate. So marriage is a lifelong union between a man and a woman. Um, so if one, either the husband or the wife dies, that union, that marriage is done because it's a lifelong, that one of those lives is done. Um, so as long as the man and the woman are both alive, they should remain married. What is marriage? Marriage is a lifelong union between one man and one woman. We're going to pray. O oh, blessed home where man and wife together lead a godly life by deeds their faith confessing. Their many a happy day is spent, their Jesus gladly will consent to tarry with his blessing. O Lord, we come before thy face, in every home bestow thy grace. And children, father, mother, relieve their wants, their burdens ease. Let them together dwell in peace and to love one another. Um, so we're actually going to jump right away into our worksheet for today. Um, so it is on marriage. So you're going to want to pull that out. And now that we're jumping into the sixth commandment, um, we're going to see what is the sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery. We're going to be looking at this in the next couple lessons of what does this mean or how does Luther explain the sixth commandment. We should fear and love God that we lead a pure and decent life in words and actions and that husband and wife love and honor each other. That's something we saw in our lesson for today about the husband and wife loving and honoring each other. So make sure you get this down. Pause the video if you need to and also make sure that your name makes it on top. 
And then we're going to go on to Genesis 2, verse 18. The question asks, why did God create a woman for Adam? It is, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him. Um, so God created a woman for Adam because it wasn't that good for him to be alone. Also, Eve was a helper. Um, she was going to be able to help Adam along the way. Who brought Adam and Eve together in marriage? We look at Genesis 2, verse 22. Then the Lord God made a woman from, from the rib, and he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. So God brought them together. Who unites couples in marriage today? We look at Matthew 19, verse 6. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So God is still the one who unites people in marriage. According to Matthew 19, verse 6, once we become joined in marriage, what don't we have the right to do? Um, so once you're in a marriage, you don't have the right to separate. And we'll see that there are um, times in the Bible that God said that you can separate, but um, we'll see those specific times. But overall, God does not want us, once we're married, he does not want us to separate. Looking then at Romans 7 verse 2. It says, according to Romans 7, verse 2, how long are we to remain married to our husband or wife? Um, and we saw that in our lesson. It says it's a lifelong union. We also see that it says here, for example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law that binds her to him. So for how long? Lifelong. If our husband or wife should die, are we free to marry someone else? Um, and that's something that happens um, in marriages, but what does the Bible say about it? It says, so then, if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she's an adulteress, which we know in the Sixth Commandment says you shall not commit adultery. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man. So if your husband or wife should die, are we free to marry someone else? The answer is yes. According to Mark 10 verse 6 to 8, let's look that up. It says marriage is to be a union between a blank and a blank. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother to be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. So marriage should be a union between a man and a woman, or a husband and wife. Going on to the back side, um, we will see a couple of these. The number 10 says, what is one of the finest blessings that God can give to a married couple? We look at Psalm 127 verse 3. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. So the biggest blessings is children.
Then going on to Ephesians 6, verse 4. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So it says, what is the greatest responsibility that Christian parents have towards their children? And that's to train and bring them up in the Lord. And when it says bring them up in the Lord, um, that means take them to church, um, have devotions with them, read with them the Bible, pray with them um, to bring them up closer to God. Why is it very important that we be very careful about whom we marry? I want you to put that into your own words, but marriage is a lifelong union. Um, so if you marry somebody that you don't know very well, and you're stuck with them, or you are, it's a blessing that you are with them for life, um, it might be hard if you don't know them very well. The same way if maybe they aren't a believer, it might be tricky. Um, but I want you to answer that question on your own. And then it says, whom can we ask for guidance in helping us find a good marriage partner? Um, that is or Philippians. Four, verse 6. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So we can ask God for help in finding somebody for marriage. And then, how does our book define marriage in this lesson? Um, in our lesson, we saw that it is a lifelong union. Between one man and one woman. Alright, so the only question you have is just number 12 to answer that on your own and then you are all set.